Welcome back to Film Time, do you like Jason Statham and Amy Smart? Today, let's watch an action movie, Crank. Story begins. Jason is the king of assassins. In the morning, when he woke up, he felt numbness all over his body. The blood in his body seemed to be clotting. Jason stumbled into the living room. There was a CD in front of the TV. Then he played the CD. The second killer in the world, Verona appeared on TV. Yesterday, Verona attacked Jason and injected Jason with a new poison. Now Jason has only one hour to live. Jason kicked the TV in a rage. He drove all over town looking for Verona. He called his doctor for help. The doctor happens to have heard of this poison. He told Jason to secrete adrenaline through exercise to prevent violent death. Jason then asked his friend Lada to put out a reward to list Verona as a wanted. After two phone calls, Jason felt drowsy. He stepped on the gas pedal. The streets on either side of him flashed by quickly, and his heart was thumping up with the speed. Jason arrived at the clubhouse. He asked Orlando about Verona's location. That's when a group of men kicked in the door. They saw Jason pointing a gun at Orlando. They took out all their weapons. Orlando explained that Jason was just prying for information. Then they put down their guns. The poison started to take effect. He slammed his head into the big man next to him. His heart rate improved just a little bit. Jason deliberately provoked the crowd. He drove off with the gangsters beating and kicking him. But because of the serious speeding, the cops were all chasing him. The doctor called at that moment. It would take him an hour to reach Los Angeles. Ask Jason don't stop exercising, just keep the blood flowing. The adrenaline rush will keep him alive. As he was talking, Jason ran into a mall and crashed. He was driving too fast and flipped the car. Stuck in the middle of the escalator and unable to move. All he could do was run. Jason came upon a cab, rudely yanked the passenger off and ordered the driver to drive. The short break gave the poison a chance to take hold. Jason told the driver to change into loud music and turn up the volume to the maximum. Then he's swinging to the beat. But this excitement is not enough. Jason told the driver to pull over again and wait for him. He broke into the convenience store, grabbed the cashier and threw him off the counter. He took a garbage bag and grabbed all the Skittles and energy drinks with him. Jason then rushed to the boss's place. He asked the boss to help him find the antidote and kill the gang of Verona. However, in the eyes of the boss, Verona and Jason are just chess. Not long ago, the boss offered Jason a high price. Ask him to assassinate the triad's leader Tang Jin. In the face of the triad's anger, the boss introduced Jason as a scapegoat. Verona is just a tool used by the boss. The black boss betrayed them. This made Jason so mad. But the gunmen are about to fire. Jason could only leave in anger. Soon the doctor called to tell Jason that his plane was late. Jason now had to find an ephedra to keep himself alive. This kind of artificial adrenaline is strong, can only inject one-fifth of a syringe. Just after the call, Lotta called again. He saw Verona's brother, Dreadlock, entered a restaurant. Jason sped all the way to the restaurant. Dreadlock was surprised by him. He plans to kill Jason. But Jason attacked him at the back door. A knife cut off his hand with the gun. He was shot in the head by Jason. Jason used Dreadlock's cell phone to call Verona. Verona couldn't believe that Jason wasn't dead. He killed his brother and took his brother's family necklace. Jason went to the hospital looking for ephedrine. But such prohibited drugs are not sold. The doctor quietly contacted the police. The experienced young man next to Jason reminded him. The nasal spray also contains ephedrine. Jason grabbed a few boxes and them as he walked. Soon the police locked him up. Jason changed into a hospital gown and tried to slip away. But because his haircut was so striking, he was immediately recognized by the police. On his way out, he threatened the doctor to get him ephedrine. In a mess, the emergency card overturned. Jason finally found the ephedrine. At the time, the poison began to take effect again. Jason ordered the doctor to electrocute himself immediately. As soon as the defibrillator approached, Jason was ejected into the elevator. He shoots the police and throws out the people in the elevator, then immediately injects himself with ephedrine. But Jason forgot all about the doctor's instructions. Injected the full dose in one shot. At that moment, Jason just felt the strength that he could not control himself. He was running like crazy on the road. The doctor learned that Jason had overdosed and told Jason to find a way to pee. If he didn't pee within 30 minutes, he might die of suffocation. Jason's repeated and aggressive criminal behavior has caused chaos in the city. It's reported by the news. Television stations are warning citizens to be careful with their safety. Jason saw the news and grabbed the motorcycle of a patrol officer. Jason's heart rate dropped on the run. Thick eyelids several times nearly close. To keep himself awake, Jason opened his hands and stood on the motorcycle at high speed. The next moment he crashed it. But Jason only scraped a little skin. Finally, he waited for a call from his girlfriend. 
Jason knew Verona would kidnap her, to force him to do what he wanted. He told her not to go out. His girlfriend didn't know who Jason was. Jason didn't have time to explain. While his girlfriend was getting dressed, the poison attacked again. Jason directly picked up the next cookie machine, cooked his hand up a bit before restoring the state. At this moment, the two killers rang the doorbell. During the break that his girlfriend answered the phone, Jason quickly killed the killer at the door. The other killer went around to the back door. Jason deliberately messed up his girlfriend's bag. While his girlfriend was looking down to pick up something, he wiped out the threat and threw it into the sink. In the restaurant, Jason told his girlfriend that he was actually a professional killer. Last night, he received the assignment to assassinate the triad leader Tang Jing. But the moment before the shooting, Jason thought of his girlfriend. Jason wanted to give up the job and live a peaceful life with his girlfriend. That's why he didn't kill Tang Jing. But that night, the black boss ordered Verona to kill him. These messed up all Jason's plans. But his girlfriend thought, Jason wanted to break up with him. She left the restaurant in a fit of rage. Jason chased her out and tried to explain. But his heart snapped and he fell to his knees. He had no choice, but to regain his energy. In public, Jason regained his energy through sex exercise. That's when Lada called and said he had found Verona. Jason grabbed his pants and headed to the garment factory. As soon as Jason got out of the car, he realized something was wrong. He climbed to the top of the building and found the gangsters. And Lada had already been killed. Jason's actions against their rules. A big war is about to start. His girlfriend showed up at the wrong time. Jason preemptively kills the nearest fighters. Then he used Lada's body as a meat shield. He approached his girlfriend. Then entered the elevator and escaped. The gangs followed and confronted Jason with firepower. At this moment his girlfriend believed Jason was not lying. In the chaos, Jason broke the car window and shoved his girlfriend into the car. Jason enjoyed his girlfriend's service when driving. While fighting with the killer coming after him. Cool car skills and excellent marksmanship made him invincible. Before the fight even began, Jason has already killed all his pursuers. The doctor finally arrived in Los Angeles, had prepared an adrenaline drug. Jason's life was temporarily safe, but this method would only last a few days. The only way to eradicate the poison was to find an antidote. Jason used the necklace worn by the Verona family to force Verona to agree. Meet at the hotel to exchange the antidote. The black boss and Verona had been waiting on the roof of the hotel for a long time. But only Jason's death can prevent the triad from revenge. Then decided to inject Jason with another dose of poison. At that moment, Jason suddenly raised his hand as if like he was going to shoot. The crowd laughed, thinking that Jason was hallucinating from the drug overdose. But the next second, the person Jason that pointing it was a bloody hole in his head. It turned out to be the fake dead Tang Jing with the triads. The two gangs immediately started a firefight. The scene was in chaos. The boss used his men's bodies to block the bomb for himself. Called for a helicopter to escape. But Jason grabbed him by the hand. At that moment, Verona attacked from behind and injected the poison into Jason's body. Then he shot the black boss and took the helicopter. Just before the helicopter took off, Jason violently discharged Vero's gun. Jumped on the helicopter to fight with it. But after all, he was poisoned. He couldn't stop Verona for a while. Jason calmly crushed his throat. Then he took out his cell phone and dialed his girlfriend's home number. Left the last confession at the end of life. Hang up the phone. Then smash the car on the road heavily. So, is Jason really dead? Please leave what you think. Also press like for more videos. See you next time.